dann wird den Juden das breche Lügenmaul gestoppt werden. We should go and burn all the copies of their Talmud. But he was infuriated about the Talmud. Of course, today, the Jews consider him a great anti-Semite. Alright, I'm going to show you a very blasphemous video here by the producer of Marching Design, Paul Wittenberger. He is a lost, hellbound Satanist. And I'm going to show you the proof of that, by the way. I'm not just, uh, you know, being nasty or mean-spirited. And I'm going to start out here. I'm going to show you a scene from their little propaganda film. And you can see it right there. I'm going to put it on screen for you to watch. And here, you know, Paul Wittenberger's acting like he's the, the faithful little student sitting there being taught by this anti-Semitic slob, Tex Mars. And they're talking about the Talmud, okay, and the blasphemous thing that the Talmud says about Jesus Christ. Let's watch this. It states in there that Jesus corrupted Judaism. And as punishment for his crimes, he is now in hell, burning in fiery excrement and he shall so be forever and ever. Okay, now that is a blasphemous statement. That is definitely blasphemous. The Talmud is a, is a very satanic, wicked set of books. I'm not defending the Talmud, okay? But for them to say, oh, that's so horrible and blasphemous, and then to turn around and say what Paul Wittenberger is gonna say at Stephen Anderson's Babel building, in his church, you know? He's down there and listen to what Paul Wittenberger actually says about Jesus Christ burning in hell. He says the same thing that these supposedly wicked Jews say. And listen to the reaction from Andrew Snake's congregation. Listen to the little chuckling and, and then the amening when they're talking about Jesus burning in hell. Watch this. This passage is a, a picture of Jesus Christ going to hell to pay for our sins. And so now... When you say this, almost all fundamental Baptists, they always say, you know, no, Jesus didn't go to hell. He went to this place called, you know, Abraham's bosom or like paradise or, you know, this holding tank that, 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 and just hanging out for a couple of days. But that's not true. It, he, you know, he, he went to hell and the Bible clearly states that. Let's, let's start off and turn to Psalm 16. Okay. We're not going to watch the whole video. You can watch the whole thing. But he goes into this thing, as satanic non-dispensationalists will do, and they say that saints in the Old Testament went to heaven just like saints do today. Absolutely not possible, because the saints in the Old Testament, they did not have their, their sins forgiven. They were not taken away until after the cross. So they could not get into heaven until the perfect sacrifice was made to pay for their sins, to atone for their sins. Oh, you can read about that in the book of Hebrews, all right? So the New Testament comes in with Jesus Christ, and he brings in that perfect sacrifice. He goes down there to the heart of the earth, to this chamber called hell, where both saved and lost go. And we're going to see about this in just a minute. And he goes down there, and he leads captivity captive. The Old Testament saints, that's why there's a resurrection of Old Testament saints after the crucifixion of, of Jesus Christ. They come up. He leads them out of there. Right? He doesn't go down and burn in hell like this wicked little Satanist is trying to teach. Right? But let's look at the verse here in Psalm 16, verse 10. It says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. And he says, well, the Holy One is Jesus. Okay, that's true. It's, this is a prophecy. This is, this is written by David, and, but it's a prophecy of you know, David, the coming king there, the son of David, Jesus Christ, and it's a prophecy about him. But let me just say this. If Jesus Christ went down to hell and he burned and he's still burning and he has to burn for our sins, uh, wouldn't that be corruption? Wouldn't that be the Holy One seeing some corruption? Burning in hell? I mean, you have the Lord of glory, God, and His, and he's down in hell burning to pay for our sins. And that's exactly what Sodomberger says here. I call him Sodomberger. Because uh, I do believe he's a sodomite, and uh, he's worked for sodomites. I'll show you the proof of that in here in just a minute. But this whole little speech that he gives, 
he never takes you to, to the book of Luke chapter 16 verses 9 through 30 or excuse me 19 through 31 where you have Jesus Christ talking about this place down there this this thing of this uh, rich man goes to hell and Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom but let's just read here um, verse 22 and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame there's water over there in Abraham's bosom flame where the rich man's at but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comf comforted, and thou art tormented. So they could be somebody down there that's being comforted. That's why in the Old Testament you read, This king dies, and he slept with his fathers. They're down there sleeping. Okay, in Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom is not there anymore. When you die, you're absent from the body, present with the Lord. But, uh, Verse 26, look at this, Luke chapter 16, verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there was a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Uh, why is it that this wicked little Satanist wouldn't take the people to that passage? He'll make fun of it, he'll mock it, he'll, oh, Abraham's visiting the holding tank. Eh. Why not go to the passage where it talks about it there? You know, princess. He probably liked the fact that I called him that. But uh, let's watch. Let's watch a little bit more of this uh, little sodomite's uh, disgusting sermon. The Bible says in, uh, in uh, Romans six twenty three, it says, "For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." So, so. Who's the sinner? It says the Bible says in John three sixteen, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, there's none righteous, no, not one. So we're all sinners, and the, and the the Bible says in Revelation twenty one eight it says, uh, but the fearful and unbelieving and vomil and murderers and sorcerers and whoremongers and adulterers and all liars shall depart in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, in order for Christ to to pay for that <laughs> sin, he has to go to hell. Because the payment for sin is death or hell. Right. And so if you go to uh, 1 John 2, 2, it says, For he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. And so it, in order for Jesus Christ to pay for our sins, you know, he, mankind, he had to go to hell for that. See, why would Jesus have to go to hell eternally to pay for our sins if Jesus Christ could simply pay for it by, like, um, being spat on and mocked and, and crucified. You know, many Christians all throughout history have been spat on, mocked, and crucified. I'm not downplaying the, that Jesus did that, but it, it, the whole point of uh, him dying on the cross was to suffer that eternal payment in hell. And Let me just pause it there for a minute. Notice he did not say, you know, when, when Jesus talks about going down into the heart of the earth, He's talking about for three days and three nights. Old uh, Sodomite here, Sodomberger, says eternal suffering. Jesus has to continually, for eternity, Jesus is burning in hell to pay for sins. That is what you call blasphemy. Absolute, total blasphemy. And if you're dumb enough out there to think that Paul Wittenberger is a saved man, i got news for you. You better check your own salvation if you're that stupid to think that this blasphemer is a saved man. And why would why would Stephen Anderson, the great pastor, independent fundamental Baptist pastor, why would he have a guy like this preaching in his church? I guarantee you if anybody preached like that in my presence, I'd be standing up and getting their face. Why would you let the, why would you let somebody say that about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Why didn't you stop him, Anderson? Let's watch the, the little rest of the little satanic rant here that this little is is doing. Let's watch. And, you know, it's not Hades or Sheol, and it's not some, you know, holding tank in the center of the earth. It's hell. It's fire. And Jesus had to go there to pay for our sins. And so, 
if you believe that the King James Bible is the word of God, the King James Bible says that Jesus went to hell. Amen. Let's close our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, let's close our eyes and have a word of prayer. Uh huh. Yeah. To his father, Satan. All right. That's disgusting. I mean, he just literally said, right before that, that clip, the last one I played, he said that dying on the cross was not enough. He's denying the gospel. And Anderson sat there and watched the whole thing. Let me show you a couple little pictures. You get online and just look up some pictures of old uh, Wittenberger here. And uh, here's an interesting picture of uh, him. He's there at this uh, art you know, art expo thing. And he's, he's doing this fundraiser. And, and he's got these really disgusting paintings. And I remember I came out with a video and I was going to expose all these paintings of his. And all of a sudden his whole painting website just gets shut down miraculously happened years ago but uh, it turns out that the Lord is as I was doing some research for this the Lord gave me some little pictures here that show some of his demented paintings and look at this look at this uh, filthy girl that's with him here you know the kind of company that this guy keeps oh having a good old time there you know and she's got a can of Bud Light there sure uh huh and here's a uh, here they are you know in front of his paintings these disgusting satanic paintings and you can see in the background there it's kind of blurred a little bit but you can see there in the background it's this woman that's uh, with child and she's got all these claw marks all over and somebody has a pistol and they shot her twice in the neck and th th this is paintings coming from a man that's that's a fine Christian right and there's a better picture of it you can see this picture on the wall this painting on the wall these are Paul Wittenberger's paintings and here over here you have a pyramid and this weird thing you know putting their hand around it and it says Novus Ordo Seclorum underneath it he's possessed the guy's possessed with devils it's just disgusting but uh, let me show you a little thing here online here's Paul Wittenberger's page uh, this is let me get that back up here again Paul Wittenberger's page imdb.com uh, you again you just look it up in Google you know Paul Wittenberger comes up with this page his uh, great things that he's known for and here you have he's known for the Green Hornet in 2011 worked at a Hollywood movie worked for Hollywood race to which mountain you know quality film there then he has marching design 2015 and after the tribulation 2012 and people will say well you know yes but you see that was in his past lost life it's just as the art showing thing there that was in 2009 so that's before he got saved and everything else and you know he's saved now he's a christian now so he doesn't do that stuff anymore oh really well why don't we look down here at the his recent things duel of legends a violent martial arts film completely secular 2015 so he's working for Hollywood still right now as of this year he still works for lost Satanists in Hollywood why because he's a lost Satanist himself here you have paper dolls 2015 marching design 2015 the fine Christian film that it is Hell's Kitchen from 2012 to 2014 works for that too isn't that wonderful the Amazing Race, New Order Bible, New World Order Bible versions, the Book of Revelation. How about this one in 2012? Knight of the Templar, the Roman Catholic Order of Knights of Templar. And right underneath it, after the tribulation. So while he's working for Andersnake, he's also working for Hollywood. How about that? How about that? And of course, I've shown this in my other older video I have here. But you go down through here. Uh, let's see where it's at. 2007 he was an electrician for a lesbian you know female sodomy lesbian film called the itty bitty titty committee and he's a Christian and isn't it funny too is it's kind of ironic how that uh, Andersnake says that anybody that's you know a sodomite or whatever anybody that's gay homosexual you know they should be killed and we should murder them and stuff like this and yet he's working with one <laughs> 